Now then, having another look at um, text on a curve for Affinity Photo. The previous version I did was um, on the iPad version of Affinity Photo. Now text on a curve is part of the Affinity Designer package, but it's not so far built into Affinity Photo. So Paul's come up with a macro. Now macro, as you can see, I've got that turned on there. There's the macro with, well, I'm not going to generate a macro, but Paul's made a macro that I've put into MUDS library, MUDS macros. It's, it's actually called MUDS macros. It's available from my website and I'll put a link in the description area for it. Now text on a curve is that one there the, on the bottom of the thing. So what we've started with here is text on a curve. I've got some text going. I've got a circle or an, you know drawn by an ellipse in there. Now one of the key things in here are these green arrows and the red arrows. You look for those. What I've managed to do here is put text on top of a curve there and text inside the curve just there. And you can push these around um, and put them where you want them. And you can start with one or two. Now there's another little trick that I've got to show you yet as well. Let's start by creating another circle. Select the ellipse tool. Now hold the shift key down draw a perfect circle. That's all we need. So we've got another circle and I've got no fill in the thing at the moment. I, I suppose I could put white in there if I wanted to, couldn't I? But I'll leave it at the moment. Now, select the text tool. We've got aerial regular. Well, that's all right. Put text on a curve over here on the macros. You just click on it and the first thing it does Let's put text on a curve and you can see it just there. Ah, and of course I deselected it, so there we go. Now, what you need to do here is see that little green arrow thing there? You hold onto that and you can pull that around. But you can only pull it as far as that red line there. Now when Paul first set this up, he set it up right on that green line. But I've found that if you put three spaces in there, one, two, three, you won't have the problem of when it swaps sides like that. If you haven't got those three spaces, it will leave the letter T on the top line. Now you can push that around as far as you like. And it will push around to the bottom. Now you've got a couple of green things here. And you can see you're pulling that text back out again. And you've got it on the top. But what we need is more text on A. Just to distinguish it from the other one. Let's put some more spaces in there. Now what happens when we start pushing this about? Let's set that up around there. That's the end bumper bar if you like. And it's going over the bumper bar. And you can see the fun you can have with this trying to get the thing where you want it. It was really tricky to get the top one there. You've got to play around with it quite a bit to get it where you want it. But you can see what you're doing there. There's text on a curve and there's the bottom one. More text on a curve. Well, it's looking a little bit like the top one. Those green handles, the green handles and the red handles, they are key to what you're trying to do. You click on that. 
Now, of course, you can do that with nearly any shape. Let's see if we put a triangle in there. And the triangle will fill it with a pale. No, I fill it with green. I like green. There's a green triangle. Go down here to, and we'll change this to, oh, where's a nice batter boom if I've got it on here. Batter boom, there we go. Good cartoons, a good cartoon text. Now, will we use that one? I don't know, 18 points. We might need it a little bit bigger. And it's red text again, red on green, yeah, why not? Let's make it blue, dark blue. No, that's no good. I'm changing the colour of the uh, set fill colour. Leave it green because I want the text colour. Something else entirely. So, text on a curve. Now there's our blue text on a curve. There's our little green bar. one two three so it pushes neatly otherwise you run into that little problem and there we go text on the curve pushed it down that side push that across there and you've got text on the curve outside there and that's really all there is to it as i say i'll put the macro on my description area below this video what else can we put in here while we're at it nothing select that one select that one let's uh, get that on there that's that one there that's that one there select the text select the pointer select the text now with the text selected you can see the green handles quite different than that one down there the two green handles there, because it's a much larger circle. Two green on the left hand side. Two green on the left hand side, but a bit higher. So, you can certainly play around with that. You can have your text on the inside or on the top. Now, how you get it on the top to be on the inside of the curve and still printing nice, I'll leave you to discover that one. But that's text on a curve on the desktop computer. Mud's macros. Um, you'll find Paul Muddit on uh, Facebook groups under Affinity Photo and Designer for the iPad. And, and, and a few other Facebook. Go search for him on Facebook groups and you'll find him. Paul Muddit, wonderful man, very skilled and does lots of good things with macros. Now see I had that thing selected I just pressed text on a curve and there it is back to square one. Let's undo that and it's back to where it was because we don't want it selected. Well, I don't want it selected I don't want to change it. There we go. Have fun with that one.